all, welcome back. So I am Srinidhi Rajakrishnan working currently as Automation Specialist at IBM and in today's video we will be speaking about few automation engineering interview questions that are to be faced by an engineer with over 0 to 2 years of experience and with a skill set of selling in Java. I strongly suggest you guys to have this document while going through the video as this will help you guys to follow the content as I speak and explain. So the first question and one of the foremost questions that are being asked is about opening a browser. So how do you open a browser? So assuming that you are trying to open a Chrome browser, so this is the command that you will be using to open your Chrome browser that is web driver driver equal to new Chrome driver. So what does this statement basically mean? Web driver is an interface and Chrome driver is a class that is implementing this interface. So that is why you're creating an object driver against the class Chrome driver. So this basically will launch your Chrome driver and since we are currently above 4.6 version of Selenium, this is the only command that is required to launch a Chrome browser. However, in versions that are before 4.6, you may have to also have the executables path. So since we are over 4.6 version, so I am not mentioning anything about that and this statement is sufficient for you to launch a Chrome browser. Moving to the next question, how do you navigate to a particular URL? So once you have launched your browser, the very next step that you would do is to navigate to a particular URL or the website. So with Selenium and Java combination, you have two ways to open this. One is to use the get function and the other is to use the navigate one. So the very first command is a driver.get with the argument given as the URL. So here I've used HTTPS www.example.com. So you can straight away use driver.get and uh, the URL as your argument. However, if you want to perform functions like back, forward, etc., then you may have to use a navigate. So driver.navigate.2 and followed by the URL as the argument. And if you are using or if you are using get alone, then you may not be able to navigate forward or backward or even refresh the page. So in order to overcome this limitation of the get function, we have an option to use navigate as well. So this question can also be drafted like what is the difference between get and navigate? Then your answer should be when you use get, you can only open the URL. But when you use navigate, you will have the option to move forward, backward and refresh the page. So the next question, so one, now you have opened the browser, now you have navigated to the particular site. The next thing would be for you to perform certain actions. So to do that, you need to find the web elements. So when I say web elements, web elements are nothing but the um, elements or items that you find on a web page. So throughout this uh, video, I'll be mentioning the items present on the web page as web elements. So finding an element using ID. So there are different types of locators with which you can locate an element or a web element on a web page. So the first and foremost would be using an ID. So the interviewer may ask you, how do you locate an element in the web page using just the ID? So then your answer should be, we have an inbuilt facility or function which will help us identify the element using ID with Selenium Java. So in that case, your answer should be, web element space element is equal to driver dot find element open the bracket and then by dot id so these are consecutive arguments that you're going to give find element is the function that you use to locate your element using multiple kinds of locators so the locators may be id name class name css selector xpath we will be discussing more on each of these in the following questions so for now the question is find an element by id so to find the element by id, the function that you will always use to use any locator is find element followed by that open a circle bracket and then use the class called by then dot id is the function that you are going to use and from there you will be passing the id of the element as the argument. So this is the ideal template for you to find any element using any locator which is nothing but web element space element is equal to driver dot find element of by dot and the next argument or the next word that is going to follow is the type of locator that you're going to use in this case it is going to be id 
So that is why you can see on the screen that this is the web element space element is equal to driver dot find element of by dot id of the elements id. And this is the same template that you will be using for class name, for CSS selector, for uh, XPath, for name, for text, for partial link text, all that. So the following questions will be having the similar kind of answer. So I am just going to read out the answer and you guys can go through it with the document that will be linking down below in the description. Next is to find the element using a class name. So using class name, you are going to use the same template that is web element space element is equal to driver dot find element of by dot class name of the class name. And the next is for a CSS selector. This also has the same template. So you have to use a by dot CSS selector followed by the CSS selector expression. And then is to find an element by XPath. So this again is driver dot find element of by dot XPath followed by the XPath expression in double quotes. How do you type a text or a string into a text box? So this is like pretty um, you know basic but since this uh, video is about zero to two years of automation engineer questions so I'm including all the basic questions as well so then you have to use here here you will only be using element dot send keys so send keys is the function that is going to help you to populate or type the string of your choice into that text box and if you see in this answer I have used element dot what is an element Element is nothing but the web element that we have found out or declared and initialized in the previous question's answers. So if you see in the previous question, I have said web element space element is equal to driver dot find element of by dot id or class name or CSS selector or xpath followed by the expression. So that is the element that we are using because we have already located the element and now we are using the same element and to that element is what we are passing or sending the keys or typing the string into that text box. So that text box has been found using the find elements function and stored into a web element called as element. So that is why here you are seeing element.sendKeys of the text you want to enter. So the next question is getting the text of an element. So the previous question was how to enter a text into an element. Now we are seeing how to read or extract the text from a particular element. So to do that, there is an inbuilt function again from Selenium called dot get text. So here string space text is equal to element. So the element which you have found or located using the previous find element function is now being used to extract the text from. So string space text is equal to element dot get text. Do not forget to open and close the bracket and this function does not take any argument. It only returns a text as its return value. So next question or one of the most popular questions that are being asked right now. That is how do you close a browser? So there are two ways to close a browser or rather the tabs that are opened. So the first and foremost or the most recommended one is to use driver.quit. Driver is the object that we have created in the very first question which is nothing but web driver driver equal to new chrome driver. So which means this driver points to the chrome browser that has been currently opened. And there are two different ways to close the browser. One is to use a driver.quit and the other is to use driver.close. Both these functions more or less perform the same action but then there is a slight difference between quit and close. There's also maybe one of the interview questions that you can expect that is difference between quit and close so quit closes the entire browser or the entire instance irrespective of how many other tabs you have opened so what it means is it closed the entire browser and all the tabs that are opened however when you use close what happens is it only closes the then current tab this can be one of the questions that the interviewer may ask you as an extension to the previous question. So in this situation, you need to switch to the child window, which means you need to get the window handles or the ID with which you will be able to navigate to the child window. 
without navigating to the child window when you do driver door close it will only close the parent tab or parent window and it will not have any control over the child tab or child window that has got opened when you clicked on any link from your parent tab so this can be another question to you that is how do you use window handles or how do you switch from parent tab to child tab but that question is for another day since we are only concentrating on questions for 0 to 2 years of automation engineers and the next question that i have chosen is what are the basic steps to create a selenium web driver test case so this is like a flow or a workflow of how you do automation so basically the steps that we have discussed so far i've consolidated it together to show it as a test case so the first thing that you would do is to launch a web browser we did it using web driver space driver equal to new chrome driver again i'm iterating so with 4.6 version of selenium we no longer need a separate executable to perform the handshake between the browser instance and the web driver so now we can directly use a single statement to launch the browser the next step would be to navigating to a web page so for this we again discussed two ways to open a website that is using get and navigate the next would be to interact with the web elements we saw a different ways to find elements and interact with the elements next would be to perform actions on the web elements so we interacted we performed actions and then we need to verify the expected results that again would be just a literal step that i'm saying here but we have assertions soft assertions hard assertions which we will discuss in the later sessions and the last would be to close the launched browser we again discussed two ways to close the browser one is to use close and quit we again discuss the difference between these two as well and the next question is difference between find element and find elements one of the most asked questions and the question itself contains the answer as well so when you say find element it will only help you to find a single element that matches that particular locator that locator can be id class name css selector xpath anything and when it comes to find elements it will try to match more than one element present for that particular locator in the web page which means it will return more than one web element if present from that web page so you are writing an xpath expression and passing it to find element say for instance that xpath is matching n number of elements in your web page and when you pass that xpath into find element it will match the top left the very first element that appears on the top left corner of your web page even though there are multiple elements present but if there is only one element it will return that one particular element but when you pass the same expression into find elements it will return a list of web elements so that is the difference between find well find element and find elements so simply put find element will help you to locate a single element that matches the locator find elements will help you match a list of web elements that matches the locator that you have passed so the next question is what are the different types of locators in selenium web driver with java so this again we discussed in the previous questions as well but those were separate questions now consolidatedly it is id name class name tag name link text partial link text css selector and xpath so we will discuss more about link text and partial link text in our future sections a simple question at this question may be asked to test your practical knowledge what is the syntax for any element in the web page with id id1 so the syntax for xpath is a double slash followed by the tag name open square bracket at the rate attribute name equals attribute value that should be under quotes it can be either single or double so for writing the xpath of any element with id id1 the syntax will be double slash star star stands for any element which means an element with any tag name and open the square bracket at the rate attribute name 
So what is the attribute here? It is ID. And what is the value of the ID? It is ID1. So equals under single or double quotes ID1 close the square bracket. So this is the syntax for writing an XPath for any element with ID, ID1. The next question is an extension of this question. So the question is, what are the different ways of finding any element with ID, ID1? So the first one is XPath, which we just discussed. And the second would be CSS selector. So the syntax for CSS selector is similar to that of XPath, but it has some, you know, relaxations. Like the template goes like tag name, open square bracket, attribute name equals under single or double quotes, the attribute value, close the square bracket. So now we have gotten rid of the double slash and the at the rate from XPath. So this is a simple difference between writing an XPath and CSS selector. And the third way, oh, let me give you give the example here. So it is going to be, since it is star, which means it is a tag name. So when you're writing the same in CSS selector, when it is any tag name, you don't even have to mention the tag name, no slash, no tag name, simply open the square bracket, give the attribute name, which here is ID equals under single or double quotes, the ID's value, which is nothing but ID one and close the square bracket. So this is how the CSS selector looks for any element with ID, ID one. And there is another way to write it using CSS selector itself. It is as simple as hash followed by the ID. So which is nothing but hash ID one. So this will simply find the element which has the ID, ID one. All right. So this is sometimes easy to use CSS selector. Sometimes it is easy to choose XPath. And the third way is to use the find element function from Selenium Java. So it is going to be like driver dot find element open the bracket it is a circle bracket here by dot id of double quotes id1 so we have already seen this example in another question where the question was how to find an element using id all right so there are three other ways to do it using xpath and there are two ways with css selector itself and the other way with using the find element function from selenium java so the last question for today's session is to convert a particular XPath into a CSS selector. So the XPath that I have given here is a double slash diff slash span. That is the first XPath. So which means find a div which is present at any level in the web page and find the immediate child of that div which has the tag name span. So to convert this, the only thing that you need to do is div give a greater than symbol and then give span, which in CSS selector mean div followed by its child span, immediate child. And when it is double slash div, double slash span, this XPath means that find any level of div that is present in the web page, but it should have a descendant, which means at any level that div should have a child called span. So to convert this into a CSS selector, it is as simple as writing div space span, which simply means any level of div which has any level of child with a tag name span. So these are all the 15 questions that we have discussed today. If you would like to have this as a PDF document, please leave a comment down below and I will send that document to you either on your Gmail or to your LinkedIn handle. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share this video so that this can help as many people as possible. All the best.